In this video, we are going to divide this polynomial by this binomial. The easiest way to do this problem is synthetic division. Um, synthetic division is best to use when you just have x uh, either plus or minus just a single number, like x plus 3 or x minus 5 or something like that. If you have something like 2x plus 3, you wouldn't want to use synthetic division now. Or if you had x squared plus 3, this would not be a good time to do synthetic division. Okay, but we have just x minus 1, so synthetic division will be good. So here's how it works. You start with this number right here, this negative 1. But you're actually going to do the opposite of that number. So I'm going to put a box right here. And then I'm going to put the coefficients of the polynomial, uh, making sure that there are no missing terms. I see 3, 2, 1 constant. So there are no missing terms. If there was a missing term, like say if it went from x to the third power straight to x, then I would have to put in a 0 term. Um, but we don't have that now. So I've got 3, negative 8, 12, and another 3. I'm going to skip a line. All right, leave space for a row of numbers. And I'm going to put a box here at the end. Now, in this box, I put the opposite of this number right here. So this is going to be a positive 1. And uh, you begin the process just by bringing down the first number. Then I'm going to multiply and put that number here, all right, always going back to the box. So 3 times 1 is 3. If I add these up, I get negative 5. Now I repeat, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Add these up and you get 7. 7 times 1 is 7. And if you add these up, you get 10. Now 10 is the remainder. So these are now the coefficients of the quotient. In other words, these, these are the coefficients of the answer. Uh, so if I go ahead and put the variables back in, all right, understanding that these are my coefficients, okay, then um, this number at the end must be the constant. Then that makes this the x term, which makes this the x squared term. So it's easier if I just go from right to left knowing that this number will be the constant and then the x term and then the x squared term. If there was another term it would have been the x to the third power term. Now this number in the box is the remainder and what you do with the remainder is you make a little fraction out of it um, putting it over whatever you divided by to begin with. So this will be plus 10 over x minus 1. So this would be my final answer. Okay, and now let's compare that and see which choice that was. Let's see, 3x squared minus 5x plus 7 and then 10 over x minus 1. Well, there we go. A is the answer. Now we also could have done this problem by long division, and so I'm going to review that as well. So if I wanted to do this by long division, I would start by looking at this x, and I'd look at this first term, 3x to the third power. And I'd ask myself, x times what will give me 3x to the third power? Um, well, so uh, definitely I'm going to need a 3, but then x times x squared will make x to the third power. So bottom line, the answer to that question is 3x squared. If I do x times 3x squared, that will make 3x to the third power. Notice I'm lining up my like terms. This is the x squared term, so I'm going to put that term above it. It just helps you stay organized. Okay, so once you have that up there, 
what you do is the distributive property. You take this and you multiply it back by each one of these terms and you write it underneath. So I'm going to have um, 3x squared times x, of course, is the 3x to the third power as we planned. But we also have 3x squared times negative 1. That'll make negative 3x squared. So I'm going to draw a line. So what you do now is you subtract. Okay, when you subtract, you just wind up changing the signs is all. So now these are going to cancel out. So that's just, those will be gone. And I have negative 8x squared and positive 3x squared. So that's going to make negative 5x squared. And I can just bring down these other terms. So bring down the 12x and bring down the positive 3. And then you start over again. So again, I'm looking at the x, and now I'm looking at negative 5x squared. So x times what will be negative 5x squared? Well, that's going to be negative 5x. x times negative 5x will give me negative 5x squared. So once I know that, then I'm going to take that negative 5x and do the distributive property with it. So I'm going to multiply by the x, and I'm going to multiply by the negative 1. Of course, negative 5x times x is negative 5x squared, just as we planned. Negative 5x times negative 1 is positive 5x, all right? Negative times negative is positive. Go ahead and draw my line. And then we subtract by changing the signs. So uh, this will become positive and this will become negative. All right, that's how you subtract. You basically distribu distribute your negative sign and it changes all the signs. So again, these will cancel out. I have 12 minus 5, so that will be 7x. And then I'll just bring down the 3. And then one more time, I start over. Okay, I'm looking at the x and I'm looking at the 7x. x times what will be 7x? Well, that will be 7. x times 7 is 7x. So I put the 7, and once I have the 7, I do the distributive property like I've done before. So 7 times x is 7x. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. And then, of course, you subtract this by changing the signs. So this will become negative, and this will become positive. So these cancel out, and this makes 10. OK, so we've reached the end. We've already gotten to the constant. So that means this 10 is the remainder. And again, just like we did when we did um, synthetic division, what you do with the remainder is you add it on the end in a fraction. All right, you put the remainder over what you divided by. So 10 over x minus 1. So this is the quotient, all right? This is the answer to this division problem. And of course, it is the same answer that we came up with by synthetic division, A.